Mr. Secretary, uh, a real honor to have you here. I know this is your second time back, and we yes, really appreciate your, your time. Thank you. Glad to be here. Great. This is a wonderful place. Where were you in the Reagan years? I, uh, I'm trying to put, uh, I know you've got an incredible career, but I'm trying to remember exactly where you were during the 1980s. Well, well that's interesting. First of all, I was at President's Re President Reagan's inauguration uh, in 1981. My congressman from the Hudson Valley in New York, Representative Hamilton Fish, oh. who was a Republican, invi invited me to the inauguration. I had worked for him during the summers when I was in college. So I came down for the inauguration. It was actually my second, because I had been to Jimmy Carter's also. And through the 1980s, I was in law school, and then I was a lawyer practicing law in New York City. And the last year of his presidency, I applied to become an assistant United States attorney, a federal prosecutor in New York. And I was hired by Rudy Giuliani in the fall of 1988 and became a federal prosecutor right at the end of the Reagan administration in January 1989. Okay. Now, then your career progressed along. Uh, you uh, end up becoming, at a certain point, the general counsel for Department of Defense. Yes. And then I saw... Um, you went on hiatus for a bit. It looks like you went back out to private practice. I did. But in <clears> then I 10 months. I thought I was done, and they yeah. pulled me back in. <clears throat> yeah, yes. now, how did, now did, 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 were they able to pull you back in because of this specific job, and perhaps you'd always kind of had your sights on what an incredible opportunity would be, or was it just an opportunity to rejoin public service again? When I left the Defense Department in 2012, the end of 2012, I really did think I was done. And we have two kids in college, and I've got to pay the tuitions. It's time to go back to private corporate law practice. Eight months later, the president asked me if I would be Secretary of Homeland Security. I was surprised. It was a job that I never had aspired to or thought of for myself. But I'm a New Yorker, and I was present on 9-11 in Manhattan that day. And so... Homeland Security is something that is very important to me. It's something I feel and breathe. So I couldn't say no, plus my basic love of public service and serving the country. Yeah, well, so I couldn't say no. Well, now hopefully your kids are still getting through college. I, <laughs> they are still in college, yes. Okay, great. Um, As we speak, yes. Uh, whether it be in your role as an attorney for the Defense Department or your present role as the Secretary of Homeland Security, is there a shining moment that you turn to and say, you know, that's an accomplishment I'm proud of? Is there something that in your career where... Well, I could say the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell could also point out the, the May 1st, 2011, the day we found bin Laden. What I have found in public service, most often the things that are most satisfying are when you help individual people do something. You help somebody get back on the right track. You help somebody who has been tr treated unfairly by the system. Uh, an individual member of our military who's having a hard time with something that we help to correct, put on the right path. Uh, or bring joy to their life. Of all the things that I've done in federal service, I'd have to say or it, the individual cases where we've had an opportunity to make a difference in an individual's life gives me the most gratification in public service. Mm -hmm. Last question. Uh, uh, a distant observer uh, looking at the job that you have it almost seems as though the role you play is like you might see in a movie. Uh, you, you just imagine you probably never get five consecutive minutes of sleep. Uh, <laughs> there's one incredible <clears throat> interruption after another. The, you live an incredibly tension-filled life. Is that what it's like, or is that, you know, is that a real Hollywood version of, of, uh, of what you'd expect? There are lots of challenges. There are lots of issues. We have a lot of missions from aviation security to border security to counterterrorism, cybersecurity, natural disasters. <clears throat> Having good leaders of our components always helps uh, to keep the trains running. And 
Try not to sweat the small stuff and focus on the big stuff. What that big stuff is, is continually evolving and shifting uh, time to time. But <clears throat> I, um, I love the job. It's exciting, never dull. I'll probably miss it when it's over. I'll be glad when it's over, but I'll probably also miss it. There's been nothing like it. Um, Homeland Security, as I said, is something that is very important to me. And it's exhausting. Yes, my day starts at 6.30 in the morning, and then I finish you know, 12, 13 hours later. Um, but every moment of, is, of it is exciting, and it's been the highlight of my professional life. That's great to hear. Mr. Thank Secretary, you. thank you so much for coming. It's great to have you at the Reagan Library. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah.